Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, the complaints against the police office, CAPO, was established in 1974 by the Commissioner of Police. It was not a coincidence that the Independent Commission Against Corruption, ICAC, was established in the same year. The, IPCC, the ICAC was, of course, a fully independent body. It took over the investigation of police corruption from the unlamented anti-corruption branch of the police. The idea that investigation into non-corruption complaints against the police should be carried out by the police itself was always controversial. That is why in 1977, the Commissioner of Police invited a subcommittee of the unofficial members of the Executive and Legislative Councils, UMELCO, to monitor CAPO's complaint investigations. The subcommittee was chaired by a member of the Executive Council, and its vice chairman were made up of members of the Legislative Council. In 1986, the IPCC was established to take over from the UMELCO Police Group. Its connection with the Executive and Legislative Councils was maintained. Until the year 2000, the chairman was always a member of the Executive Council and its vice chairman, members of the Legislative Council. My immediate predecessor, Mr. Dennis Chang, Senior SC, was both a practicing senior counsel and a member of the Executive Council when he was appointed chairman. Beginning with my appointment in 2000, the chairman had been senior counsel in practice. However, the three vice chairmen have continued to be drawn from the Legislative Council. Members of the IPCC have always been leading members of the community. Throughout the years, efforts have been made to improve public confidence in the impartiality of CAPO's investigation. The introduction of the observer scheme was an important step. As the 2012-2013 report explained, and I quote, the observer scheme was introduced in 1996 to strengthen the IPCC's monitoring function. Under the scheme, observers appointed by the Secretary for Security may attend interviews and observe the collection of evidence in connection with CAPO's investigation of reportable complaints. Observation is not confined to observers. Members of the IPCC can also participate. When I became familiar with the working of the observer scheme, any doubt I had about the impartiality of CAPO was greatly reduced. I can say that during my years with the IPCC, I had no reason to doubt CAPO's impartiality. Of course, reality and public perception may differ. What can be done to improve public perception is a continuing quest. I hope this symposium will bring forth many useful ideas to strengthen the IPCC in its work as well as in public perception. The idea that complaints against the police should not be investigated by the police itself is a powerful one. Continuation of the status quo may be justified, but it should not be taken for granted. No doubt, the symposium will discuss the reasons for and against the retention of the status quo. Now, when there is disagreement between CAPO and IPCC on the disposal of a complaint, a report will be made to the chief executive. 
This does not happen very often, but has happened before. Maybe the symposium will identify and examine the reasons for this practice and see whether any change is desirable. I mentioned the establishment of CAPO and the ICAC in 1974. It may come as a surprise to many here that even as late as 1974, some people believe Hou Zaim Dong Chai, a good man will not become a policeman, is my translation. Fortunately, those days are long gone. The police force has improved beyond recognition. And not just the police. It would not be fair to single out the police. I should say that Hong Kong generally has improved beyond recognition. Anyone who had used a public hospital or dealt with any government department or official in those days will know how much things have improved. In those days, people were unaware of their rights. The Hong Kong Bill of Rights was in the distant future. Universal values, human rights, democracy, even the rule of law were not taught at school. Now, they are our most cherished values. School children know them. We live, we live and breathe them. They are guaranteed by the basic law and are jealously guarded by everyone. Also, now the rank and file of the police are made up of men and women who are well educated and dedicated to serving the public. They share our values. The stigma of the past has been eradicated. I think we have a police force second to none. Of course, that doesn't mean that there are no bad apples, but I do not doubt the determination to root them out. IPCC's yearly reports confirm that. It is fair to say that the police in Hong Kong enjoy a hard-earned reputation for their professionalism and dedication. However, Mr. Chairman, in your recent report, you have identified new areas of concern. You said, and I quote, the public is most concerned about perceived abuse of power by the police and the way some public order events are handled and dissatisfaction over police handling of major public order events is more widespread nowadays, unquote. You also said, and I quote, controversy about the neutrality of the police has been a hot topic in public discussions, unquote. And that explains why, and I quote again, IPCC members attended the 1st July procession to gain a better understanding of the police handling of large-scale public order events, unquote. I believe the transformation of the IPCC, and I'm quoting again from your report, from a backseat review and monitoring body to a multifaceted independent police complaints oversight organization, unquote, as well as your commitment, and I quote again, to working together with the police and other stakeholders to identify measures to improve the smooth handling of major public order events, unquote, is significant and timely. It is a laudable aim to promote cooperation between organizers of public events and the police and ensure the peace and order of public demonstrations for so long a matter of deserved civic pride in Hong Kong. Many important topics will be covered in this symposium. In the first two sessions, you examine the current police complaint system in Hong Kong, as well as to consider it from an international perspective. When I said the Hong Kong police is second to none, I was not complacent. I recognize that the job of a policeman is not an easy one. I know that police forces in free societies everywhere are subject to tremendous pressure and that they 
just like the Hong Kong police, are striving hard to improve. I do not doubt the sincerity or the strong desire to improve. The sharing of experience should lead to mutual improvement. In the third session, you discuss the important subject of the balance between police powers and civil rights. The continued success of Hong Kong depends on striking a proper balance. Any doubt, even in perception, against the neutrality of the police needs to be seriously addressed. The new phenomena of rifle demonstrations requires special attention and clear demonstration of equal treatment. Constructive suggestions from the symposium will be invaluable. Mr. Chairman, you stepped down in June after serving the customary six years. You can look back at your record with pride. You have served with energy, courage, and judgment. You have rightly perceived the new and important role which the IPCC can play in keeping a proper balance between public expression and public order. I hope your successor will serve with equal success and enjoy the same reputation for fairness and fearless integrity. I wish this symposium lively discussions and lots of good insights. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Justice Tang. May I now invite Chairman Mr. Jack to deliver a welcome speech. Mr. Jack, please. Mr. Justice Tang, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. May I first welcome you all to this symposium jointly organized by the IPCC, the Center for Comparative and Public Law, and the Policing Studies Forum of the University of Hong Kong. The theme for this symposium is the police complaint system in Hong Kong, where are we heading? That was probably the question I should have asked myself when I was asked to be the chairman of the IPCC in 2008. Now, six years down the line, I have witnessed the IPCC's transformation from and I quote again, a backseat monitoring body, unquote, to an independent statutory body with a reasonable degree of public recognition. The past six years have been, at least for me, an unexpected journey. And as far as I'm concerned, that journey is fast coming to an end. It is perhaps difficult to avoid the temptation of looking back and ask, what have we done? I'm fully conscious that what have we done is not exactly the theme of the symposium, but it is, in a sense, the prior question to where are we heading, because one must have a reasonable understanding of what has been done in the past in order to project oneself into the future. So what have we, the IPCC, done since 2009 when we became an independent statutory body which are relevant for today. I will mention three things in particular. First, we have transformed from a relatively unknown body into one which, according to our most recent survey carried out by Hong Kong Youth Public Opinion Program, is known to more than half of those who are kind enough to respond. Now, that is quite an achievement, uh, at least when compared to the current government. Some of you may have read recently in the press that most people in Hong Kong do not know who are the undersecretaries or political assistants to our principal officials. Many of us probably do not know who are our, public, uh, our principal officials. So that's the first thing. Second, uh, we are not just known to the public, but have garnered an image of fairness and impartiality. I'm proud to say that we are a symbol of independence and integrity, 
which are important values that are treasured by a free and inclusive society like Hong Kong. Third, we have gained the trust not only of the police, but also uh, not only of the public, but also of the police. We have been told by senior management of the police that the IPCC enjoys a positive image amongst many in the police now. There are bound to be skeptics, I know, but by and large, we have gained the confidence of the force as well. So at least from these perspectives, I'm pleased to say that we have managed to achieve a reasonable degree of success. So what is the way forward for us? How do we build on what we have achieved? I'm not sure what is the answer, which is why we have invited you here today to share with us where do you think we should be heading. But it seems to me that building from what we have done in the past, there are a few pointers. And again, I mentioned three. First, although we are told that a decent portion of the po population knows us, and as Mr. Justice Tang just said, reality and public perception may differ. I certainly agree with him that what can be done to improve public perception is a continuing quest. We can certainly do more to let people know who we are and what we do. But the communication should not be one way. In my view, the IPCC can strive harder to know what our stakeholders expect of us, what they want us to do. And this is a topic that will be canvassed in the first and second plenary sessions of today, and I look forward to some interesting discussions there. Second, IPCC must strive to maintain and enhance its image of independence, impartiality, and in integrity. We cannot and must not be complacent. We must continue to gain and retain the trust of our stakeholders. But one question will forever be raised. Should the existing two-tier police complaint system in Hong Kong be preserved? Or should complaints against the police be handled independently of the force? And if so, how? Should the IPCC transform into a wholly independent one-stop complaints handling body instead of continuing a monitoring body? Or are there hybrid models which would better suit the political and social fabric of Hong Kong? I would look forward to a lively debate over these interesting and fundamental questions which needs to be addressed. Third, while we are discussing the future shape of the police complaint system in Hong Kong, there is still work to be done on the ground. Our last two public opinion surveys identified the police's handling of public order events as the issue with which most Hong Kong people are concerned. Sadly, given the political landscape, it is perhaps inevitable that public order events will continue to remain in the headlines in the foreseeable future. I hope that our third plenary session will provide some insight into what role the IPCC can play in helping to strike the proper balance between police powers and civil rights. So ladies and gentlemen, I will not keep you from your eagerly awaited next program, which is of course coffee break. <laughs> I trust that when the IPCC celebrates its 10th anniversary, anniversary five years from now and looks back at what will have been done over those five years, we will say, we have done this because of an idea that was raised in the fifth anniversary symposium, or some important progress was made because of a debate that took place during the symposium. I thank you once again for gracing the event with your presence today. I wish you good health and every success in your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. It is now our uh, eagerly awaited morning coffee session. Please proceed to the first floor. Um, we have prepared some coffee and fresh refreshment. Um, please also be reminded that uh, Moot Court is a public venue. Uh, you are suggested to bring along your personal belongings with you when you leave your seat. The first plenary session will be started at 10.30. See you later. <laughs>